So I didn't let that bother me, what people said. I knew that it was a, a thing that was in, in the news, and people were, were looking for things to point things. Even the legendary Florence Griffith Joyner was no stranger to criticism and hate. The closer to the top an athlete gets, the more they are under the watchful eye of the public. And that isn't always a good thing. Take Flojo, for example. The Americans' times of 10.49 seconds in the women's 100 meter and 21.34 seconds in the 200 meter have stood since 1988. Griffith Joyner's 10.49 comma run in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Olympic trials came completely out of the blue, representing a significant increase upon her personal best of 10.89, achieved just three weeks prior, as well as Evelyn Ashford's world record of 10.76. However, controversy surrounds her record-breaking time, as it's likely that there was a technical malfunction with the wind gauge, which showed a wind speed of 0.0, .0 meter per second. This reading was at odds with the high wind speeds recorded in every race before and after Griffith Joiners, as well as the 4.3 meters per second reading over double the accepted limit. Taken from a different gauge on the nearby triple jump runway at the same time as her sprint, Regardless, the record was ratified by the IAAF, and it still stands to this day. Flojo continued the two-day Olympic trials by clocking remarkable non-wind-assisted times of 10.70 in the semifinal and 10.61 in the final, both faster than any other woman had ever achieved up to that point. She also set an American record in the 200-meter distance with a time of 21.77 seconds. 0.06 slower than Heike Drexler's world record. Needless to say, Griffith Joyner went into the 1988 Seoul Olympics as a huge favorite, where she comfortably won 100-meter gold with a time of 10.54 comma, falling slightly short of her record, despite there being an illegal tailwind of 3.0 meter per second. She then broke the 200-meter world record twice, clocking 21.56 in the semifinal, before registering 21.34 in the final with a legal wind speed of 1.3 meter per second. Despite facing allegations of performance-enhancing drug use, Griffith Joyner never tested positive for any banned substances. And I knew that I have never taken drugs. She attributed the change in her physique to a new training program led by her husband, who adapted her workouts to include more lower body strength exercises, such as squats and lunges. Flojo retired from running the next year, in 1989, just two years after returning to the sport. She planned to come back in 1996 to compete in the 400 meter distance. But this dream was ended after she developed tendinitis in her right leg. More than three decades later, no female sprinter has come anywhere near breaking Flojo's records. Not even a drug-fueled Marion Jones. Meanwhile, in the men's sprints, the 100-meter world record has been broken 11 times in the past two decades. Jamaica's Veronica Campbell Brown expressed her thoughts about this. It is beyond my reach. The 200-meter world record is 21.34, and the 100-meter record is 10.49. How many females have even run 10.6 in the past 20 years since Flojo set that record? In actuality, there was another woman to run close enough to Flofo's 10.6, Marion Jones. At the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia, she won gold medals in the 100 meters, 200 meters, and 4x400 meter. She also claimed bronze medals in the long jump, and the 4 by 100 meter relay. At the 2001 World Championships, Jones won gold medals in the 200 meters and the 4 by 100 meter relay, and she went undefeated during the 2002 season. She took much of 2003 off because of the birth of her son. She returned to athletics in 2004, but was not up to her previous form. At the Olympic Games in Athens that year, she managed only a fifth place finish in the long jump. Through much of her career though, Jones was suspected of using steroids. In 2003, a federal investigation into illegal steroid distribution by the Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative led to allegations by Balco founder Victor Conta and Jones's ex-husband, CJ Hunter, that the sprinter used banned substances. 
Jones, who had never failed a drug test up to that time, denied the allegations. In 2006, she tested positive for a banned substance, but was later cleared by a follow-up test. The following year, however, she pleaded guilty to lying to federal investigators about her drug use and admitted to having taken steroids. In November 2007 track and field's international governing body, the International Association of Athletics Federations, annulled all of Jones's results from September 2000 on, including her Olympic titles. The International Olympic Committee officially stripped Jones of her five medals from the Sydney Games the following month. In January 2008, she was sentenced to six months in prison for providing false statements to federal investigators about her steroid use and for her involvement in a check fraud scheme. Victor Conte, the man behind the Balco Laboratory, explained, Steroids can help a female sprinter to lower her 100-meter time by about four-tenths of a second or four meters faster. The effects of steroids on male 100-meter sprinters are about two-tenths of a second or two meters faster. Neither Flojo nor Jones were the first and only athletes accused of doping. During the 2016 Olympics, Ethiopian superstar Almaz Ayana, with a time of 29, 17, absolutely decimated a 23-year-old 10,000-meter world record. Ayana ran the second half in a time that's faster than the Olympic record for the 5,000 meters and looked totally relaxed while doing it. There has already been speculation that Ayana's record was too good to be true. Ayana, aware of such suspicions, said post-race through a translator, My doping is my training and my doping is Jesus, nothing otherwise, I am crystal clear. In 1983, Czechoslovakian Jarmila Kratochvilova ran the 800 meters in one minute, 53.28, which is still the longest standing record in professional athletics. Kratochvilova's masculine physique was already a subject of scrutiny during her competitive years in the early 80s, and retrospective suspicions are exacerbated by the fact that she was competing in an era that predated random out-of-competition drug testing. It is worth noting, though, that Kratochvilova never failed a drug test, and all evidence against her remained circumstantial. Then, there was East German runner Marita Koch, who set the record in 1985, with a time of 47.6, effectively putting it out of reach for all who came after her. Koch, who never failed a drug test and still vehemently maintains her innocence, was implicated when a molecular biologist from Heidelberg named Werner Franke, uncovered an official doping protocol from the East German secret police. Relating this to the seemingly impossibility of breaking world records, some say that perhaps unattainable records are not the only problem. Even in the days when women were breaking sprint records, they still didn't get the headlines of their male counterparts. Some may argue that personality is as much a part of the equation. Veronica Campbell Brown claimed it's disappointing to not get the respect that the males do. Britain's Shauna Thompson, who won double gold in the sprints at the 2008 Commonwealth Youth Games last year, shared how even she sometimes struggled to recall who won the women's 100 meter at major championships. That's one of my events, and even I'm forgetting sometimes, she admitted. People know all the men, but sometimes the women get forgotten about. If Usain Bolt is all you hear about on TV, then that sticks in people's heads. No one's saying Shelly Ann Fraser, so everyone's like, who's Shelly Ann Fraser? According to Campbell Brown, it's a touchy subject, but if I should be honest, I really believe men get more attention in this sport. Now though, more and more female sprinters are becoming more known and are getting closer to breaking Flojo's records. The Jamaican trio of Sharika Jackson, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Elaine Thompson Hera were among the favorites to break the record. Then, there are their American rivals Gabby Thomas and Shea Carey Richardson, among others. St. Lucia's Julian Alfred, the new Olympic 100-meter champion, is also fast becoming a new favorite. Watch this to see what else has been happening.